Sources of stress. Hey, stop the noise. Stop the traffic. Stop bugging me. Excuse me. Uh, is, is the screaming in my mind bothering you? Do you have screaming in your mind? And we say, I am so stressed out. Such a common feeling. We all know that feeling. But what is stress? What is it? And until we know what it is, we can't even talk about the sources. It's more about the interpretation, isn't it, of the stimulus. Stay tuned and let's really learn about this so we can feel better no matter what. Welcome to the Best Years Podcast. This is Dr. Darlene at WhatStopsYou.com. Are you a teenager or a young parent, baby boomer, or in your golden years? The best years are now in each stage of development. So I've got power tools for you today that will help you make amazing changes so you can show up in the world with your amazingness. A couple questions for you. Do you have hurry sickness? I think they call it addicted to urgency. I've been guilty of that one. Does standing in a long line bug you, freak you out? In Christmas time, I gave a, a speech called The Joy of Stress. And it was at Christmas time and wrapped around holiday stress and the ways we think about things. So I might refer to that a bit. So if you think about that time of the year, is Santa coming too soon? Do you want to alleviate stress so you can enjoy holidays? Would this affect your business and personal life if you could handle it? Have you ever wondered what a stress-free life would look like? Yep, we do. We wonder that one. Well, we've got to look at what things look like in order to go towards them to achieve them. So the first step many times is just to know what something would look like. We'll do that in a bit. So the truth is here that a stress-free life would be boring. Ha, uh, hear me out. And wouldn't you wouldn't feel like you had purpose or passion. Okay, hold on. A stress-free life might be useless and sad based on Webster's definition. We can see that stress is what causes us to grow. Don't you hate that? Don't you hate lessons like in shirts that talk about, oh, your trials make you stronger? <clears throat> yeah, I hate that, but it's true and you know it and I know it. Ugh. According to Webster, stress is a force, a pressure, a strain, an emphasis, force producing change. So according to this definition, stress is necessary for change. And I've talked about the bicep curl a million times. If you don't have overload on that bicep muscle, you're not going to grow it. So, okay. I don't care. I still don't want to have it. So let's keep going. So armed with this knowledge that we're talking about, we can understand that without stress, mes muscles will atrophy. And without mental stress or stimulation, our minds stagnate. Yeah, of course, we know this. It's also true, however, that there's negative consequences when stress or pressure become too much. That's right. A simpler and more appropriate definition may be no stress equals I'm dead or I'm dead bored. Do you agree with that or not? Appropriate stress is progress and growth. And then too much stress is I'm dead <laughs> or I'm going to die or I feel like horrible. So we want to talk about what's appropriate stress. So that reframes a little bit sources of stress because you're going to learn here that there's really not sources of stress. There's only ways of thinking. And your biggest source of stress, I guess, is the way you think about things. So again, hang out with me. So, uh, okay, you're going to be happy to know that you can learn to control your stress by understanding its cause and the purpose. You can also learn to shift your le levels of stress by controlling your thoughts, which we'll talk about. But first, it's important to know the difference between positive stress and negative stress. So is there a difference or is there such thing? So positive and negative stress. How can stress be positive or negative? And consider this, and I love this example. Okay, let's say there's an Olympic athlete and they're in the blocks for the 200 meter race and they're, they're very relaxed and they, they're just kind of chilling and they're not stressed. Well, are they going to run very fast? Uh-uh, they're not going to run very fast if they're all not stressed at all. Hello? Now, on the opposite side of things, what if the Olympic runner knew that there was an assassin in the stand and about 10 seconds into the race, one of the athletes is going to get shocked. Now, hello, this amount of stress 
won't let you run very well either. It's too little stress or too much stress in these examples. Here's another example. A student usually performs better when there's a deadline. Why? On the other hand, if they're breaking up with their girlfriend that day, the stress will mostly cause them to perform poorly, right? Too much. <clears throat> too much thinking, not too much stuff going on, but too much mind interpretation that's clashing. Another example, actors perform best with live audiences, but weeks of nitpicking by a lunatic director is going to hinder their ability to concentrate. So it's just too much. It's too much stimulus, too much to think about. So what's positive stress? Okay, positive stress helps us to keep motivated and grow as a human being. Then, you know, it's positive. Negative stress slows us down, creates disease, takes us out of society, depression, anxiety, and all, and causes fatigue. And more, we know this. So it's really our thoughts are the things that are keeping us with fatigue and depression. And when you say I'm stressed out, can you see how that's not making sense anymore? Carry on. Here we are. Our bodies do not function properly when they are under great amounts of stress. Now, abnormal stress can put us at a greater risk for health problems. You know that, such as ulcers, colitis, heart attacks, general decrease of immune system and response. So too much, no bueno. So in a lab study, love these studies, rats were taught a task. Huh. And then, oh, this is so sad. I can't even say it. Huh. They were taught a task and then they were punished for doing it. Okay. Hmm, that's mean. So this stress caused the rats to have illness, premature aging, hardening of the arteries and premature death. This is a true story. They also found a shrinkage of all the lymph glands, which contributed to a decrease in general immune response. Thus, the rats died from minor infections from being stressed out. And stressed out, that's a term we're going to flip around today. So in another study, researchers tested what effect control has on stress. And I love this study. In fact, I learned these studies, what, I was 30 years ago in school in my Psych 101 class, I think it was, and I'll never forget these these studies that I'm talking about here. And I, I apologize, I don't I don't have I don't have the reference. My bad. I've learned my lesson now. Back then, I didn't know to keep the reference. It might have been in my textbook. So this other study, researchers tested about control. So two groups were observed. Both groups were expected, uh, or excuse me, exposed to distraction noise while they're performing a demanding task that they're supposed to concentrate. So they're concentrating, I don't know what it was, doing little puzzle pieces or something. And they had a lot of distraction noise out the window, such as traffic, horns, sirens, dog barking, people yelling. So one group had a control button that they could block out the noise if they desired. So they'd push the button and it would make the window completely soundproof so they couldn't hear it. So the productivity of the group with the control button was expected because the other group didn't have a button. All right, so they don't, one has a button, one doesn't. Who's going to do better? It was remarkably higher in the control button group than the ones without the control button group. And it's interesting to note that no one pushed the control button. Uh, just knowing it was there made all the difference. So just knowing they could push this button and close the window and make it soundproof. They perform higher, but nobody pushed it. So knowing that we have control is huge, huge, huge for controlling how we perceive stress. So now instead of saying, I'm stressed out, I'm perceiving things as stressful is probably a better way to say it. Let's talk about fight versus flight response. This is kind of old news now. I remember being young, thinking this was so cool to learn about it. Well, let's revisit this. So at the beginning of time, the cavemen experienced this fight or flight thing syndrome. When they were under attack, they would respond with fighting, hitting, defending with adrenaline or fight running away from the threat. Today, uh, instead, we may stand at a podium and give a speech and have immense stress. The same amount of stress as the guy getting killed by the wolves. But you have to just stand there because it's not appropriate to start screaming or running out of the room when you're the speaker. Just stand there with all the blood draining out of your brain and your extremities. It's hard to think clearly and your legs feel like jello. And true story, my sister fainted once giving a talk when I was a little girl. So I learned it was horrible. 
that's another subject, public speaking, because I overcame that, became a professor of public speaking. And because I know a lot about stress and stress response, I can help the students speak without this stress. That's the fight or flight. Our bodies can handle fight or flight, the old fashioned way, by hitting or running. But here's the thing, a fly buzzing around your head all evening is seriously more than I can take. I, I can't do that one. And, and so it seems that our body's natural response has like no sense of humor. <laughs> yeah. So what bothers you? How do you interpret it? And that's what sources of stress are, is how you're interpreting. Now, a natural, let's talk about natural responses to stress. Some of the natural responses are, okay, these are with your body, thyroid hormone increase in the bloodstream, a shutoff of the entire digestive tract, that's no good. Increase of cholesterol in the blood, oops. Racing heart rate, ow. Blood thickens, ew. Skin pills, ugh. And sweats, and all five senses become acute. So when we're under perceived threat, and we call it stress, I'm going to call it a threat, perceived threat. Did you hear the word perceived? Not a threat for sure, but a perceived threat. Then our body does all those things. So your blood's going to, you know, do this and your heart rate and all that. Situations that aggravate your stress, that aggravate this now, include bad genetics, insomnia, right? It's going to aggravate it. Poor diet, yep. Obesity, it's hard to get around. You don't feel good about yourself. Unrealistic goals, tobacco and caffeine. Oh, yeah, decaf, please. Uh, having the wrong job, financial distress, worst ever. Um, health issues, unstable household, all those contribute to this overall feeling of perceived overload. So situations that help you handle stress naturally are good genetics. This is actually, these are all really good lists to write down if you re-listen re to this. So good genetics, a sense of humor, always going to help like, like my fave thing to say is like, who gives a shit? <laughs> you say it all the time. Like, who cares? Who cares? My girlfriend and I, we're going to get a t-shirt that says that. And she'll always come out and say, who cares? It gets a girl. We're like, oh yeah, right? So calm down. Anyway, a sense of humor really helps. Like seriously, oh my gosh, OMG. Those kinds of humors can lighten situations. Okay, right. Diet helps you function better. Realistic goals, nothing worse than a goal that's not reasonable or achievable. Then, of course, we have relaxation skills, enough sleep, planning ahead, financial security, so helps so much, a stable home. So let's get into uh, more ways to actually handle stress constructively. And you get that I said that not correctly, but people respond to a sentence like handling stress constructively. And you know by now I've switched the words to say handling the way we perceive stress constructively. Okay, we can't control our genetics. We need to focus on what we do have control of and use it to our benefit. Remember that positive stress pumps us up, helps us look forward to things and keeps us alive with purpose. Yes, a little bit. Since we know that an appropriate amount of stress is wonderful and important to feel alive, the task is to learn how to balance and control stress to have this passion. Stress is a communication from your body to your mind. Learn to shift your levels of stress by controlling your thoughts. What is your stress trying to tell you? So when it starts to happen, you want to pause and you want to identify those issues the stress really belongs to, whose it is. Hey, that's not my issue. Bye-bye. Give it back. That's a whole boundary uh, podcast I do. So give it back if it's not yours. That's one thing you can do. Now, if the stress is yours, take care of it. Don't let it sit and weigh down on you. Of course, we're not sure on right now what your exact stress is because I'm not talking to you individually. Yet, if I did, or you can take a moment to say, okay, what is it specifically? What is it? And what are the, the stories I'm making up about this? Next thing, are you just taking on someone else's issue? So if so, in your mind, send it back. Like I said, give it to Santa. What's the meaning that you're making to this perceived stress? And you know, another one, what will it matter in a hundred years? I love that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. 
And what can you do about it? What are you going to do about it? And how about focus on something else? Now, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to share with you my four steps to freedom. The FFFF. So stay with me. We'll go over that briefly as well. And it's the way to fix feeling bad with my formula. All right. So reduce your stress for the reasons by following some of these good tips we're going to do. And they'll help you shift too much stress into appropriate balance stress for, for whatever season it is for you. Monitor your stress level. First thing, be aware where you are in a scale from one to 10. One is a, 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 a 10 is like, I, I'm going to freak out. So where are you right now? And how are you, how often are you above a seven? If you, you're probably above a seven a lot, or you wouldn't be listening to this. So introspection is always the first step. Next thing, take two minutes to sit back, let go and relax twice a day. I call them my reset. And it looks like I'm, I, if I was like an animal, I'd be a dog because I like to snuggle with my boyfriend and my kids and grandkids. And I like to take naps all day, <laughs> but they're resets. They're kind of like a, a, a set reset, like a bicep rest in between sets where I'll sit down and just sit on my swing. And I look like I'm doing nothing, but trust me, it's that twice a day or more relax, let it go. Hold on. What's up? Introspect. Stop. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Next thing, focus on who you really want to give gifts to when it's Christmas, who you shouldn't give them to for their birthdays. Start to say no, calm down, chill out. And again, like I said, I had this organized for a presentation at Christmas. So at that time, I would say, we're giving so many presents to people. Tell all your friends and your siblings, we're not doing it this year, but let's write a note to each other or something like that. Next thing, take care of yourself by doing things that make you feel good. That's so important. I can, I could read that 10 times. If you don't have you, you have no one. So fill yourself up. Next thing, write your feelings in your day planner so you can see them objectively. You might just write your one to 10 to keep kind of a mood meter, kind of a journal of what's your mood. I also have a mood meter um, on my website that's really cool to over weeks period of time, keep that journal. Otherwise just write on a piece of paper so you can say, gosh, I'm always like an eight on stress, my perceived stress, or I'm just like a two or I'm bored. Next one, talk it out. Sit on Santa's lap and tell him your woes. Call your girlfriends, call your friends, call a therapist, call you. Talk it out to somebody. I found talking to my teenagers helped me probably more than anything when I was raising my kids because they were so one, pure, they were still pure then, and they would just see things factually, like what are the facts, and really, really help it, help me talk it out. Okay, here's another one for perceived stress that's so not intuitive. What you want to do is alternate from left brain activities to right brain activities. So you go from balancing your checkbook with numbers to walking around the neighborhood and enjoy the lights whatever season. So for, then you could go from construction work all day, change it up by reading a, a murder thriller. So from talking to people all day to helping yourself with algebra or taking a math class you play. So you change your right and left activities, right, left. I would study for math 10 hours in a row when I was in my bachelor's because I was behind and I literally threw up one time because I had studied so hard. I know, right? I was kind of addicted to learning. And so what I learned is don't do that. So the next day I said, okay, girl, we're only going to study for two hours at a time. And then we're going to change it to a right brain activity instead of doing nothing, which I can call it the rest set. That's appropriate too. But it's also cool to change it up from the left brain math to writing a creative story or telling your grandchildren or an elderly parent a story that's creative so you can go back and forth from the right to the left brain and and then external and internal changes and so that's that's a whole subject there it's a beautiful thing okay i got a bunch more cry and then laugh ha ha a hearty ho ho <laughs> or he in fact if you can make yourself laugh have you ever been so sad you just laugh like, are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? It's like, is life a 
joke? Is it a joke? And so sometimes making your laugh, yourself laugh, or <sighs> heave therapy, those are good things. All right, more. Stop and find out what's funny about your stress, then put it on an put on an elf hat and get through it with a little humor. Okay, I'm reading this list. That's fun. Okay, next one. Discover the limiting beliefs that are causing your stress. Okay, that's huge. That's another podcast on limiting beliefs that's causing this perception. What is it that you believe and you think? A small limiting belief can create tremendous amounts of stress. Once the belief is gone, so is the stress. So a limiting belief is, if you don't fully know what that means, check out my podcast on limiting beliefs and how you change them quickly. It's also in my What Stops You book on my website or Amazon, Darlene Braden Taylor. And that one, there are two chapters on how to change limiting beliefs like that. Pretty cool. Next thing, plan ahead. Always plan ahead and use time management. Go to the mall on Monday mornings when hardly anyone's there. Think about what you're going to do. Okay, so that's that's huge. Just planning ahead. Next one, I hope you're writing these down. Say no more often. It's okay, okay to tell your 16-year-old no, you can't have that for Christmas. Or no to your sister, I am not able to babysit for you. I also have a podcast on saying no, no, a thousand times no. No is like a really cool word used correctly. That's huge, especially for most of you listening that say yes, yes, yes all the time. Stop it. Next one. Lighten up. Who gives a care? Don't take yourself so seriously. Enjoy the atmosphere that surrounds you wherever you are. Enjoy what's positive. Look for what you will see. You will see what you're looking for. If you look for red in the room, you'll find red. If you look for yellow right now, look around. You're going to see yellow. If you look for green right now, you're going to find green. So what are you looking for? What are you sorting for? All the people that hate you, that don't like you, that are yicky? Or are you sorting for higher vibrations and love and light? So whatever you look for, you're going to find. And what you focus on, you give power to. So. The formula that I have, and I have, again, another podcast on this, and, I re and I'm going to do seminars on it and everything. So really quick, the four Fs are, the first thing is the facts. So write this down, facts. The second one is fables. The next one is fix. And the next one is freedom. So when you have a perceived stress, you're going to, number one, number one, go to the facts. What are the facts of what's going on? You know how dogs don't make meaning to things. So if you're fat, they don't make it good or bad. They just go, oh, that person's, they just sense a larger person than a smaller one, but it doesn't mean anything. So you want to go into the dog mode of looking at your situation and what are the facts. If, so, if a dog was looking through the window and reporting, what would they say happened? Oh, that person was walked away. That person shut the door. That person took, went to the bank and took money with your bank account. And they're not making it mean anything right there. So the second one is fables. What fables do you write about what just happened? So what stories, what meanings, feelings, what are you blah, 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 making it mean? Oh, it's me because they just hung on that. So that's the fable piece. And that's the beliefs that are mucking you up right there. It's not what happened to you. There's a lot of people who are abused, a lot of people who had parents killed in front of them. Awful, terrible things happen to people, and we all can handle them and think about them differently. Some are more difficult, obviously, than others. Some are just terrifying for a long time, but ultimately, it's what you make it mean, period. It's what you make it mean. So that's, that's a whole something to think about. So that's the fable piece. What kind of a, a story can you tell that's more positive than your fable of death and doom? over the facts. And that's huge. The next one is the fix. How do you do that? If you can read my book on the belief chapter, boom, you might do it like that. Other, t other ways to do it besides reading my book with the fast magical ways is to think about what actions you can take or not take or what skills you can develop to learn more about how to handle this. Or really the fix is to say, who am I and do I know me and I am bigger than this issue 
and I am grand and great in love and passion and love and light and, and trust and faith. And I'm, I am all of these things with the strength that I can be larger than this and or a perspective of seeing this. But that's not really stressful, is it now? It's just something that occurred in my life. And I'm not special with this awful thing because the next door neighbor had something that maybe could be called worse than this. So as I step back, that's a real skill to the fix. And after that comes the freedom, the freedom to be, the freedom to be and live and love and really have that freedom of peace in mind. So hope that helps you. Uh, in this article, I'm glancing at it that I wrote. I ended up by saying, enjoy the busyness and all the things you get to do during the Christmas month. Notice how much more you are accomplishing in your business. Focus on love and take your time to feel the joy of presence with those you care about this holiday season. Who knows? It may stick with you until next holiday season. May you experience the joy of stress this year. So I hope this helps you. Please let me know and we will talk soon. Have a good one. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to my channel so we can hang out. Also, go to whatstopsyou.com for notes to this podcast, more articles, and more tips so you can indeed live the best years of your life now.